Now it's time for another edition of What Would Jello Do? Hopefully most people watching these are aware of the union busting and budget slashing and burn the social safety net with napalm type tactics used by uh, Governor Walker in Wisconsin, Governor Christie in New Jersey, Governor Kasich in Ohio, and how Walker was almost recalled and Kasich's union busting extremes were uh, recalled or actually overturned by referendum at the ballot box. Well, here's another one from those same nasty people at ALEC, American Legislative Exchange Council, funded, of course, by your friend and mine, the Koch brothers. This one went down in Michigan, where another one of their little Tea Party puppet governors by the name of Rick Snyder and a rubber stamp all-Republican leg majority legislature in both houses, thanks to people not paying attention to local elections and letting these people get in, put through what is called the Local Government and School District Fiscal Accountability Act, allowing the governor, at his whim, to dissolve city governments and seize the town and appoint what is called an emergency financial manager who gets to come in, fire the mayor, fire the city council, privatize or sell off anything he wants, and uh, rewrite uh, public budgets with no input, wipe out city charters, immunity from lawsuits. In other words, appoint a dictator for all practical purposes. And this has been done for naked financial scam purposes in towns like Pontiac, where the guy they appointed, named uh, Robert Schimmel, I believe it was, uh, was the same guy who worked for the Koch Brothers funded Mackinac Center to come up with this law in the first place. And what did he do but uh, fired not just the city council, but uh, also, and took all their salaries away, but fired the city attorney, the city clerk, the director of public works, and uh, outsourcing various parts of City Hall to private corporations. Then, a fire sale of the city's assets, selling City Hall, selling the police, selling the fire department, selling a water pumping station, a golf course, even selling two cemeteries. I wonder who bought those all at fire sale prices, and of course wiped out contact tracks with uh, union city workers. Benton Harbor is arguably worse, where the scam revolved around, well, as far as I know, Benton Harbor and St. Joseph, Michigan, I think they're on opposite sides of a river on the coast of the lake uh, near South Haven, where my mother grew up. St. Joe has all the money. Benton Harbor is where the poor and the more African-American population is and where Whirlpool abandoned their manufacturing plants and things like that. But Benton Harbor had this really nice public park right up against the lake. Why not appoint an emergency financial manager to seize the park, privatize it, so it can become a very exclusive country club that the local residents, residents can't go to anymore, complete with a golf course designed by Jack Nicholas. And, like Pontiac, they still haven't actually solved the budget problems, they've just been giving away the store privatizing the police, fire department, and uh, getting ready to privatize things like the water supply. They're starting to move in on Detroit, where the mayor, Dave Bing, lost control of the city's finances, and now the emergency financial manager has announced that the ideal size of a school classroom for kids is 61 people in it, about triple what was considered healthy when I went to school. But luckily, this fall, on the Michigan ballot, and for crying out loud, everybody in Michigan, register, show up and vote, and anybody who knows people in Michigan, get them to do this. Proposal 1 will overturn the emergency financial manager law. Just say no to corporate coups and corporate fascism and Governor Snyder, and for crying out loud, send this law down the toilet where it belongs so it doesn't go national.